Friday, everyone. Thank you so much for your patience. I know we're running a little bit behind time. You know, the internet has been fighting me all week and today was not an exception. So thank you for tuning in. If you would do a big favor and drop your location in the comments so we could see where everyone is located, kind of get some engagement going on here. And then I'll do the honor of introducing our special guest. So uh, if you would drop your location, you may be getting a comment from StreamYard. If you want to have your information, your face show up with the comments, uh, make sure that you allow StreamYard the permission to get your uh, name and information that way too. So we've got folks in Houston, San Antonio, North Carolina, all right, so I know there's a few more eyes here. We'll give you guys a chance to add to the comments. We want to make this as engaging as possible. You know, how often do you get to have the content come to you and you be able to interact with the content? And so we want to fully use this platform in its fullest capacity. So thank you. I'm, I see it. Couple more eyes here that I just want to give that opportunity to um, to comment on. So excellent. So as always, feel free to be asking questions in the um, chat as you're watching, and I will make sure those questions are um, visible to our guest speaker. And so make sure you're interacting, taking your notes. This is being recorded, so it'll be shared for um, later viewing in our screen or in our group, excuse me. And then also uh, it'll be available on the YouTube page. So if you are not familiar with our group, we have a um, we have a media tab as well as my company, My Own Lane Consultants has a YouTube page where this content will be shared as well. So without further ado, I am going to go ahead and bring on our special guests, allow them to do the introduction and they're just going to uh, take it from there. So let's go ahead and add Mr. and Mrs. Hudson here. Welcome. Hey. Can you hear me good? Yes, yes ma'am. Hello. All right. Excellent. So thank you so much for your time and being here as well. I'm going to now fade to the back and let you do your introductions and go forth from there. All right. Hello, you guys. I am Tia Hudson. Um, we have been in the logistics industry over I want to say 20 years, and we've been freight agency owners for five. Yeah, I'm Devin Hudson. Um, I've been in logistics and warehousing since I was 18, from driving trucks to from stair companies to the bread truck drivers to working in warehouses, every dog on where. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been, we've been an entrepreneur, I'm sorry, I've been a business owner for 10 years, mm -hmm. but an entrepreneur for five because that's when my mind, mindset changed five years ago when I got into being a freight agent. Absolutely. And my background is pretty much customer service. Uh, before this, customer service, um, real estate, mortgage, taxes, some of everything. Um, and I was actually working for a lady before and she had a trucking company maybe about 10 years ago and she didn't make it look pretty. So I was definitely uninterested in trucking, period. She was always fussing about those trucks, the the um insurance, the fuel, the cost, the everything. So I was like, girl, I am definitely not interested in, in trucking. So when Devin decided that we we're gonna take this this next step, then of course that's when I got more into it. Yeah, you know, because before um I was overseas, I was working as a contractor uh with the military. I was in Afghanistan, so when I lost that, when I pretty much got let go from that contract, I came back home. You know, I didn't really have that much money saved, so I had to do something. So I started working for the same company that she was working for, the, the mm -hmm. husband and wife comp owned company. And the guy had some box trucks, whatever. So I ended up driving this box truck for about two years for him until he said it wasn't really making him enough money and he was going to sell the box truck. So it was like either I buy the box truck or I got to go back to working in the warehouse. Mm -hmm. making 10 12 dollars an hour at the time i know the prices of labor went up now but back then it was 12, about 12 dollars an hour tops yeah you know what i'm saying so um i didn't want to do that so i went on ahead and got a, a high interest loan we got the box truck and didn't really know what i was doing but i just wanted to make some money 
and keep what I had going on, yeah. going on. So, um, and we, we really didn't even, we really shouldn't have been a, a trucking company. I don't know, truck, period. Nah, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about, I ride we almost went insurance. homeless. <laughs> <laughs> I'm riding around with no insurance because I ain't had the money to pay that insurance. Yeah. Um, I think Ben canceled that, you know what I'm saying? Like, so you know what I'm saying? I was trying to avoid the tolls and police. I did I did the whole nine, man. So, you know, and, and when that I had a big contract with the company I was with, so that's what was keeping us afloat. Mm -hmm. And when they lost that contract, it's like my money went from three or four thousand dollars a week to three hundred dollars a week. And so I got to the point where I couldn't even afford to put fuel in the truck. I was just, you know, swiping the card, making the account go negative. Cause it gave me ninety nine dollars of free fuel. You know okay. what I'm saying? <laughs> it was sad, but it was my thought process at the time. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I had to let that truck go. And you know, her dad, you know, he um, he always had money. He always was a hustler. So we always go over there. He have his nice diamond chains on. It's mm -hmm. all these outside brand new cars. Mm -hmm. and, you know. And every time I was like, "What you do?" It was either real estate. It was something that had to do with sales. I just remember growing up, every time I asked somebody what they do that that looked like they was having, you know, had a great lifestyle, it was always sales. But I hated sales. I could talk to people about anything, but as far as like having to actually go to a person and sell something, I was not good at that. But like Devin was saying, once my dad, you know, you can finish that. Oh, well, her dad pretty much told her like he was a freight agent. He had been a freight agent for like five years or whatever. He was showing her how much money he was making like his check be like i made eight thousand this week i made move, move. Mm -hmm. so i'm sitting right there like ear hustling you know what i'm saying like because i wasn't making it i was making about three hundred dollars i'm talking about i was you know going negative in the account just to make it up there for her you know what i'm saying so mm -hmm. i was like you know what i'm gonna look into this so i did my research i started getting on google youtube i saw what it was all about because he wouldn't give me the game you know what i'm saying most people who are successful you know what i'm saying most time they look at people who aren't successful you know, it's not knowingly, it's subconsciously. It's like it's like, yeah, you're not you can't do what I do. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, okay, I go, mm -hmm. I, I figure out a way. Especially from a man's perspective. Yeah. Like if a man grew up and nobody never gave him anything, then of course he's gonna look at the next man like that versus it not a hand out, just a hand up. Yeah. And a lot of older people don't look at it like that. Like, okay, no, you you the man, you should be doing this, this, that, and the third. No, no, I don't it would you know, as you as you grow, you realize people, everybody not like that. But it wasn't like that at the time. So I had to just kind of figure it out. So I started getting books. I saw what that, okay, it's one thing to know about being a freight agent or moving freight. But the main thing is sales. I was like, regardless of anything, I'm going to have to know how to sell, like how to yeah. actually get freight, how to get customers, and how to be able to get carriers to buy my loads. So I started really like investing in books and stuff like that when it came to sales and stuff like that. And confidence and stuff like that. So, um, that's what is what, what, what is a freight agent? Yeah. Okay. So, a freight agent. So, keep going. Yeah, then freight... we'll get into that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so it's going. coming. It's coming. Sorry. Keep going. So, um, I end up looking into calling different freight brokerages because freight brokerages usually take on freight agents as long as you have a million dollar book of business mm -hmm. or if you big good enough sometimes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, a freight brokerage carries the, they have a surety bond. All the insurances, um, all the load board access, the TMSs, the processes, everything is pretty much should be set up, you know what I'm saying, by the freight brokers for an agent to work up under them and plug in. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, agents have their own their own contracts, you know what I'm saying? So you get your own customers. We build our own business. You work under the broker, but yeah. you have to build your business. You yeah. are your your own business essentially. Yeah, like the one we're up under, like it's not like a a land star or somebody situation where you're labeled that company. No, you actually have your own independent full creative control, agency. everything. You know what I'm saying? That's what we, we do. Um, so fast forward, uh, her dad, I, he was at work and I end up calling his brokers, the guy he worked for because <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't get through nobody. I didn't know who to call. So I called his boss and I was like, Hey, you know what I'm saying? Um, I'm Dennis's son-in-law. I know he works for you. And I'm trying to get into the business. I'm good at I'm eager, you know what I'm saying? I'm hungry. I just want an opportunity. And he was like, <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, it's good. Talk. Give me 15 minutes. And I mean, five minutes later, her phone, her phone started blowing up. Oh, Jesus. Her daddy blowing up. Why is your husband calling my calling my boss and all of this? I'm like, 
We didn't know he was going to answer the phone, but hey. <laughs> I mean, I asked you for an opportunity before, but you weren't going to give it to me. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to take it. I'm hungry. So um, he was like, you know what? I, I don't I don't feel comfortable, like, you know what I'm saying, bring y'all on without the experience upon the us, but I'm going to plug in you so up. In so many words. In so many words. But I'm going to yeah. plug you up with somebody, you know what I'm saying, who will give you a chance. And so they gave us a chance. And luckily, that was like the best fit for us. You know what I'm saying? Like we pretty much grown with this brokerage as agents, you know, they let us be independent, build our business our own way. They've really kind of nurtured, nurtured us. us along the way because the owner is not, it's not like a freight brokerage situation where I've seen people posting groups. Hey, I started a freight brokerage. All agents come work up under me. No, it's not that like the freight brokers we're under, they actually move freight. They have customers, they have systems, they have a care sales uh, department that, you know what I'm saying? They actually move freight. It's not like somebody who just went and got a surety bond and some insurance and want somebody to build that business for them. Correct. So that, that was like the big part about it. So when I had issues and situations that came up that, you know, most people wouldn't know how to handle, I can call, Hey man, I'm going through this. Okay. Call this carrier. I, I could call this warehouse or whatever. So it just gives you more access. So yeah. it's really built us, built us to where we're at now, you know, as That's a freight it. agent, can you use your own company name, LLC, or do you use a freight agent, the freight broker company's name? We have our own name. That's why everybody calls us Hudson Freight. Like we're Hudson Freight. We you know that's we, how we lead represent. with Hudson Freight. Yeah, like all my customers know us as Hudson Freight. You know, now what I'm you were like Landstar is the only one I know. You know what I'm saying? But Landstar, if you're a Landstar agent, you got to lead with Landstar. Nobody's yeah. gonna know you as your own independent business. You're, they're gonna know you as a Landstar agent. Yeah. People know me as Hudson Freight. Right. People think that Hudson Freight is a brokerage, but we are an actual freight agency under a brokerage. Correct. Correct. You know, most people always think, you know what I'm saying, like the only way to get in this game is by dispatching or being a broker. Or owning a truck. Or owning a truck. But, you know, the freight agent way is like a great way for me because, you know, it's less risk um, to you because a lot of people go out and buy, get a surety bond. That, and I've seen people tell me like this surety bond alone is 2500 or their insurance quote was 6000 or 8000 So I'm like, you go spend all that money, but you don't even know like it's another piece that yes. goes to it. You know what I'm saying? You have to be able to have great financials, great credit. You know what I'm saying? You're going to need cares to be able to take your loads mm-hmm. and they don't want to take your load. They don't know they're going to get paid. You know what I'm saying? Or their factoring companies don't approve you and stuff like that. And you have to get customers too. So a lot of people don't take all of that into effect. They're correct. Into Cause account. I mean, it's, it's one thing to set up the brokerage, but how are you going to effectively operate that brokerage if you don't really know what you're doing? So then you got to go up against somebody like me. Yeah. I'm already established. MC numbers banging. So I don't have any issues with carriers taking my loads. We are a $30 million company. You know what I'm saying? Everything is in order. We have everything that we need to be successful. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Some people skip the getting the carrier 411. That's very important. You know what I'm saying? And then we're set up with every factoring company as well. Yeah. So you have some agencies where they'll say, okay, we'll do an 80 20 split. But their MC is new. And then when you're posting loads on the load board, no one's taking your load because the carrier feels that they're not going to get paid or they're not, you know what I'm saying? Your company is not set up with their factoring company. So it's a lot of things that you have to take into an account. And and a lot of people, they look at the money aspect of it. Like, I don't want to pay a percentage. Well, what's 0% of nothing? Exactly. Nothing. I would say like on average, it's between 20 and 20 and 50% that you would pay the brokerage. Um, for their services, but you know what I'm saying? We our our agents, our sub agents start off at 60 40. Yes. You know what I'm saying? You know, once you go up under the broker, we're up under you get 70 30. But it's, it's worth it. You it get, is. We get access to so so many things that we don't have to come out of pocket for anything no. additional. Yeah. Nothing additional. I've heard people say that they, you know, are on a 60 40 split and then when they get their commission check, you know, extra money is taken out. Yeah, no, we don't we, we don't, don't have to worry like, about every, that. You, and then it's like Okay, most people start off and you think initially, like initially, I'm going to just get access to truck stop and that. But it's more than just truck stop and that. You just can't provide just full truckload services. You know, what if your customers need LTL moves, international shipments move, trade shipments move, ocean containers move, rail shipments move. There's so many different components of freight and different things that you could be selling services to add value to your customers Mm -hmm. that you could provide, but you don't even have the know-how, you know what I'm saying, or experience. That's why I tell everybody, it's like, okay, would you go out and start a McDonald's 
without knowing how to make the max sauce. You know what I'm saying? You're trying to repeat a process that's already there. So learn from somebody who already going through it, been through it, who's successful with it. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Not, not nobody who's one of these little shaking bakes who come out here and just started something up two, two weeks ago. Somebody who actually got skin in the game, who's been doing it for years, who's proven successful and then just, you know, mm -hmm. move forward that way. But you got to have right. some kind of coaching or training or experience to be successful, not go out and just get a surety bond. That's right. That's right. And we're, we, we have a uh, mentorship program, um, but we're not just that. We actually move freight every day. Yeah. We have shippers that we're moving freight for. We have customers. We, our business has been built off blood, sweat, and tears, like actually reaching out, cold calling 200, 300 calls a day. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So we're not just mentors. Nah, we, we actually move freight. This is how we've built our business. This is how we've made our money. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have training, but that has not been what has fueled our business. Yeah, it's all about it's all about moving freight, building our business at the same time, but showing people the same way that we do it. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like learn from my mistakes, you know, learn from my successes, but just learn, you know what I'm saying? And then take off with the information. Everybody who comes up through our program gets the opportunity to be a sub agent on us. Yes. It's a funnel program. So you come in as a sub agent on us and what you do they build get? your book of business. You get access to everything we got access to and us and training and whole handing, hand holding all that stuff along yeah. the way. But and after you go to your our business, online training, yeah, online training as well. But after you start to build your business, you can go up under the brokerage and be your own agency. Correct. Without actually having that million dollar book of business, but being on track to that million dollar book of business mm -hmm. in a solid agency. Cause it's like you can't build like a building like on shaky ground. It got to be solid. It's going to fall. You know what I'm saying? It's going <laughs> to fall. So, you know, you want to have a financially strong company behind you with good credit, a high MC, where carriers want to work with you and stuff like that. That way you're not dealing with people who are doing factoring and stuff like that. I mean, that's cool, but it's not a way to build a long term sustainable business. Right. You know, you got to be cash strong. So um, it's good yeah. to have it behind us. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of people, you know, being in the groups and stuff like that, I'm like, well, I want to get a hundred percent of my money. I don't want to pay a broker thirty percent. I don't want to pay a broker forty percent. But how long is it taking you to piece all this together? Mm -hmm. Not saying that it can't be done, but why put yourself through all that stress and headache when you can take a mentorship like what we have, mm -hmm. where we actually you have an online training platform that you get access to. You get access to Carrier 411. We're giving you the low board access, professional email address, phone extension, the mentorship, live training. Like, mm -hmm. we're doing a whole nine. And that's from a freight agent standpoint. Yeah, there's no question. one out here doing that from a freight agent standpoint. And when you take a freight broker training, that's all you're getting mm -hmm. is just that training. They're not going to hold your hand and tell you how to operate your brokerage. If somebody said how long it take us to get our first shipper. Two weeks. It took us two weeks. So, because so we think bust about our it. Ass. Think about it. How long would it take you to get your MC and authority and surety bond back? It took me two weeks and I was already making money. I've had people come through my program and get their first customer within a month. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And start making money. You know what I'm saying? That's what it's all about. It's about not having how how quick are you gonna be able to make your money? Like how much how much value are you gonna be able to provide to these customers? Because right now, when you're you're going to the market to customers, they want transparency. They want, you know, to be able to see where their load is all the time. Mm -hmm. They want service, you know what I'm saying? Service and the value that you provide. So if you don't have that, the only thing you got is some load boards and basic knowledge. You're not going to be able to survive. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You got to really know how to handle this. You got to know how to deal with conflict resolution. Like if a problem arises, will you run away from it or will you fix it? Yes. You know what I'm saying? Because this is not one of those industries where you could just sit back and say, oh, I'm going to let it work itself out. Oh, heck no. Mm -hmm. You'll be in <laughs> deep. You know what? You yeah. know what I'm saying? It takes a lot to get a shipper. And you want to do just as much as you did in the beginning to keep that shipper. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You don't want anything to come between that. So you got to be prepared for anything. If some freight is on the back of a flatbed and it flies off the truck, That's what would you do? You gotta make. You gotta We've make had that before. And you got to fix it. You know what I'm saying? But it all comes back to making sure you screen your carriers as well. Like, are you screening mm -hmm. your carriers? If you're a freight broker out here and you don't have care for one one shame on you. You're tripping. You know what I'm saying? Right now, it's so much double brokering going on, and you can really jeopardize your business, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. and your relationship with your customers without doing proper carrier sales or, or carrier uh, 
what do you call it? Vetting. Yeah. Like really vetting your carriers. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because that's the face of your company that's going to those shippers. So that driver that shows up in that raggedy piece of equipment with the wrong name. That's a reflection <laughs> of you. A different name, trucking company than what you book. That's you. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we don't. That's the one thing we don't deal with is cheap freight. You'll learn that real quick yeah, when I don't you do start cheap. in this industry. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm in this business to be able to, to, to live. I know how much it, my time is not cheap. You know what I'm saying? So if it's low, I'm going to make 50 bucks or something like that, $100. I just pass up, pass on it. You know what I'm saying? I got to be able to make, mm -hmm. make me some money. Not to say we didn't do that when we first started out because oh, we were getting our feet wet. We didn't know any better. I made fifteen dollars sometimes. We $30. sold ourselves short a lot of times, <laughs> and then that one shipper, it was a, it was a really big experience, a good experience at that. We didn't know that at the time that it was setting us up for our next big customer because we pretty much did it we didn't really do anything wrong we got blamed for a lot of things mm -hmm. with this particular shipper they would come back oh you didn't do this which it was actually somebody in their office that didn't do it didn't provide proper paperwork and stuff like that so and what it taught me was communication through email is the most important thing ever yeah. i have people that to this day like they just call every time they need something but if you email you're able to refer back to email and be like boom you said this i said that boom it's there. Mm -hmm. Like you gotta learn how to properly and efficiently communicate through email. Definitely. That way you have some kind of trail and proof to cover your ass. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, like you know, the people you're dealing with at the ship or your customer, that's a person with a job. So if they're at work and shit rolls downhill and some mistake that they made, they don't want to fall on them. No. They want to fall on you. So you have to be able to cover you at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Um, we are in the expedited world. Yeah. Expedited. So box trucks, sprinter vans. Yeah, I do flatbed hot shots as well. Yeah. We do drive in, we've done reefer, but expedited is our thing. Yeah. Let's see. But yeah, this industry is not an easy one to get into. I know a lot of people get into logistics. It's not easy. You know no. what I'm saying? By far. You know what I'm saying? It's it can be stressful at times, but it's like once you deal with enough situations and headaches and go through enough things you learn from those mistakes mm -hmm. that's the only way you can learn is by doing you know what i'm saying that's it that's it it's, he just blamed for the driver negligence no not necessarily because i mean if you're communicating with the driver they have their um their rate con and everything everything has been discussed no you're not to blame so it's going to trickle down to the carrier and whatever it is it's going to cost them money it's yeah. not coming out my pocket i'm just taking it off the rate and sending an updated rate confirmation because i got to make sure my customer is straight if my customer wants money back because of a cust uh, um carrier's issue they're going to get that money back mm -hmm. and the carrier just i'm i'm sorry you know you have the many many issues i've had i can count on my hands how many issues we've had yeah with a carrier and you just like a driver just have an attitude problem or something like Correct. that or a dispatcher not actually communicating yeah. properly with the driver now we do run into yeah. that so that's why sometimes I, if, I don't know if you guys have watched any of our previous videos but we you know yeah we like, try not to deal with dispatchers sometimes yeah like you know the independent dispatcher especially a lot of new ones it just depends on how you carry yourself as a business owner Cause like I said, communication is everything. So like, if I gotta blow you up for updates, and then I can't get a phone call from you or answer, or I call you, know, you and ask you for an ETA, and you're like, um, I think he's at um pickup. I'm like, I, I I need to know. Like, I can't go back to my customer and say I think. I need to know. But he said he was gonna be there um about five when I had talked to him a couple of hours. Right. Ago. Then I call you back because <laughs> I haven't heard from you. And you like, oh my God, he's not answering the phone. You just laughing, Kiki, ha ha. Yeah. Ma'am, this is not a laughing matter. Because <laughs> you know, if you're on the, see, some people like you're on, the, you may be on the other side. You like, okay, you know, you laughing, but you know, as the broker or the agent or whatever, you made those calls to that shipper and you worked your ass off to get it, and they're finally giving you a load. And once they give you that load, and you're trying to call and confirm, and they playing around on, you know, what I'm saying as far as the pickup, the trip, the customer told you to be there by two. And it's 2.30 and these people still not answering the phone or giving you updates proactively. You know what I'm saying? So that's where the issue comes. What do you wish someone would have told you about this business before you started? Uh, Like how much money you really can make? Yeah. <laughs> like I thought, 
you know, when I got into this business, I thought like, you know what I'm saying? I could make $2,000 a week. You know, my goal was six figures. Mm -hmm. We you know, saw what my dad was making. We knew what it looked like, but we just didn't think that was our you reality. Don't, right. You don't think somebody else, what they're doing yeah. is your reality too. You know what I'm saying? You kind of sell yourself short. Yeah. I was like, you know, I, as long as I make $2,000 a week, you know what I'm saying? That's going to, that's going to get me where I'm trying to go or something like that. But then I started getting more and more business. And I started seeing, okay, this is how I can maneuver away for me to make some money or something like that. And mm -hmm. oh, if I get another customer, and then I started getting referrals and it kept growing and growing. And when I started seeing those checks just kind of get bigger and bigger, that's when I was like, dang, like this is this is rapper money. This you know what I'm saying? This is legal. Like what? <laughs> like I feel like a rapper. It should you know have been saying? started, but hey, everything <laughs> happens in perfect timing when it's right for you. So we got in at the perfect time. Definitely. For the perfect timing for us. So how does the mentoring program help across the board? For example, those work with power only reefers and dry van loads. Well, the, the mentorship program is there to help you understand every aspect of the business that you need to know. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Cause it's not only, like I said, freight brokering, like truck types and you know how to move freight, but it's also like merging that with your office knowledge and customer service knowledge and then also the tracking software and hardware systems, and systems in place and those processes as well mm -hmm. to be able to make it more efficient because you can have a, a bunch of loads or a bunch you know whatever you're going after but if you don't have a process that actively like makes it all gel together then it's going to be kind of pointless you know That's what i'm saying right. so we kind of hold people hand because a lot of people kind of still lost on what they need to do and how to put it together Correct. It's so, a lot of information to learn. It's a lot of stuff to put together. So when someone, let's just say one of our sub agents get their first client and they're just like super excited yeah. and they can't calm down. So we're going to work on the back end for you. You know what I'm saying? Reaching out to that carrier, building your rate con, all that stuff. So you can enjoy. Carrier. Yeah. We're going to do all that, vet the carrier, all of that. So you can enjoy your moment. Yeah. Yeah, you, we screen the care for you, build a load for you, make sure everything goes smooth. You know, let everybody know like how you should communicate with the care along the first time. It's like we drivers on site, we're loaded, all that good stuff. So we show people through the whole process. That way they know how to properly serve their customers. Because the one thing mm -hmm. to get to get that kind of freight, but to keep it. Yes. It's the main thing. Like all the customers I've had that I have, I've had since I started, except for one. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That first one. Was the first one. I was glad they gone, <laughs> but I've been able to retain all my customers. So we show people how to retain their customers. So that's by having systems in place to be able to make sure that you you know what you're doing and somebody to hold your hand and show you how to do it right. Facts. What do you think people get wrong? In oh, a lot of things. Yeah. yeah, a lot of things like trying to jump off the porch before you even crawl. You know what I'm saying? Like no parachute, just like whatever. Like I seen somebody, we was actually at a dog on conference and somebody said they got their shirt, a surety, surety, surety and all the insurances and stuff like that. And they went on load boards to find some freight and they called all the brokers and they said it's double brokering. I said, because you don't go on load boards to get shippers. So where you get shippers from? Like the freight broken class you went to didn't tell you how to get shippers. And you know then we found her <laughs> on Instagram, like for whatever reason, she popped up. And she got a freight broker training. And too. she has a training. Yeah, so that's what people get. <laughs> people <laughs> fucking up this damn industry, man. Like, like bad. That's like, what's going on. And people telling people like you can make a million dollars or whatever your first year. No, you can't. This is five years of hard work to get to this level. Like to make the twenty five, thirty thousand dollars a week, it takes time. So people yes. don't understand that it takes time. Like with any business you're starting is going to take time to build it. You know what Let I'm saying? Let yourself be a beginner. Let Do yourself not be, a be afraid of where you're at because you're looking at other people's success. You have to start somewhere. Yeah. Start as a beginner. Always be a student. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Don't think that you know everything and you could just do it on your own. In mm -hmm. most cases, that that's not the case. And if you are the smartest person, then you're yeah. definitely in the wrong room. You definitely got to change. You got, definitely got to change your circle first off because I was... I changed my circle. We changed our circle like a few months ago. Oh. And we have we have been doing this business for five years. And it's like to switch over and be around more entrepreneurs. And it's like, okay, things that I'm doing, they're doing. Okay, maybe I should do this better. And so it's able to 
bring more uh, perspective to what we're doing. So yes, it's pretty and dope. letting people know that we're out here because yeah. nobody knew that we were out here in the capacity that we are yeah. doing what we do. Because we've always, I've always been like a uh, introvert, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So people say like you can't be an introvert in this business. Yes, I, I've been an introvert since I started this business. She's more of the extrovert, so she'll call and talk to anybody. Sometimes I don't even want to talk on the phone. That's why I've made my business where I can do most of it on on the email. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so we tag team with our customers. <laughs> like if they're calling and he's like he's super busy, mm -hmm. then I'm in the background like, hey, what's up? You know, yeah. like kind of changing the conversation a little bit. So. Our personalities work very, very well in business. Like we, we've been doing this every day. Like we see ev each other every day. Shit, when did I realize it was time to upgrade for owner operator? When that truck when kept breaking man, down and we had no money, we about clutch. to be homeless. They could, look here, <laughs> that clutch need to be turned. I called my mechanic. He came out there that night. I remember it was like a Sunday. He came out there. He said, "Big dog, I can't turn your clutch no more." I said, "Damn!" I said, "How much clutch is?" It was like twelve hundred. My check that week might have been three forty nine, mm. something like that. Rent was due. I was like, I know I ain't gonna make no money having this truck. If I go ahead and pay this twelve, it's gonna take me a month to get my money back because I wasn't moving nothing. Mm -hmm. I didn't know nothing about low boys. I didn't know what to do. I was really lost. I had the truck just generally to take over what the work I was doing for the owner. Because we were forced into yeah. it, and you know how everybody, you know it. You living off, you waiting on your, your tax return. Yeah, that's what we're waiting you know on. The tax return come back. We're going to do something else with that return. We had to to get that tax <laughs> return. And when it came, we had to put it all on that freaking truck. Yeah. So it, it was like, it, it was it was tight. So like, that's when I had to like make that change. I'd have been on operator when I couldn't pay for that repair and pay the live for another month. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Yeah. You had to make a change because um, which what, what, you got a family. Hey, yeah. what we going to do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I had a wife, four kids at the house. You know what I'm saying? So had to figure it out real quick. Baby, mama asked for child support, trying to get everything. So I'm like, man, I got to get my life together. Like I'm tripping. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it got depressing. You know what I'm saying? So when you you got to go through that cha mind change, like we had end up doing some network marketing around the same time. Yeah, uh, we was doing stream energy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And they we, we would go to these little house meetings or whatever, and they had these meetings every weekend. So we'll go. And they would talk about stream, but they would also talk about entrepreneurship mindset. And mindset. Oh you know my God. Saying? Yeah. And so it's like the things that they would say, I was like, I, I never sold no stream. Like I never really had, I didn't do good with it. But the things that they said, I took a lot away from it. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And so I was able to use that plus like watching Pursuit of Happiness like over and over again with Will Smith. You know what I'm saying? Because that pretty much was our situation. The only thing was we were in the house, not in the, uh, what was called it? You no know, little train. Was, yeah, you know what I'm saying. We was in the house, like okay, yeah, it's, it's all bad. So I watched that movie, man. I saw like even through his worst time, he still kept pushing, and I was like, man, I could push. I ain't got no excuses that you know I can make about why I can't do it. We couldn't do nothing but get broke. Yeah. Like what? Yeah. <laughs> we like we like if do I don't something. if I don't do this. We're going to be sleeping on the street. My mama already said, you can't come stay with me. You know what I'm saying? So it pretty much was like, it's either this or this. So, Basically. So I, I pretty much just dove straight into it. Once I got the opportunity, the brokerage let us in, and it was just like go time. It so go time. that's why when people say, like, how was you able to make 200, 300 calls a day? It was like life or death. It was make 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 sure my family eats and have a roof over their head or not. Yeah, definitely Grant Cardone. We listened to Man, him religiously. Grant like, Cardone was like, I he was him like our coffee music. in the morning. Yeah. Like who's got my money? I'm talking about every day I would listen to Grant and I would just be like, I pray, and I'd be like, Man, I know I'm gonna do this. I know this meant for me. God, I know this meant for me. And I would just keep going. I would keep calling yeah. every day. And then when I got like I would get sometimes I would get so like, man, it would just be so terrible. And I would just get so down. Mm -hmm. I would just keep pushing, keep pushing. Yeah. It got five o'clock our time, Eastern. And I was like, you know, most most places here close. So I'm gonna start we're calling the West Coast. Coast. You had to think you know outside the box, man. Like we was <laughs> pulling them out of the head. Like, okay, so let's do this. Let's do that. Okay. So then we had just had our daughter. So we was like, okay, I'm gonna go upstairs with the baby while you make the calls, and then when you get tired, I'll hop in and make some calls. Yeah. So we had to work that thing out, even though it was stress. Love conquers all. So if yep. you can love each other still through all of that, ain't no ain't no stopping it. Y'all can conquer anything. 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 You, know I mean? you gotta go through the struggle. Like that's thing. Like a lot of people doubt it. 
doubted us when we started telling me like you need you need to go get a just get a job. I don't know why y'all stressing y'all self up mm. out with that. Just go get a job. But the same amount of time that I could have spent looking for a job, I could have spent building my business. No, working two, three, four jobs would have never afforded this type of lifestyle it's in my, this amount of time. Somebody said, "What's my dream? What's next? What's our dream? What's next for us and Freight?" Ooh. Our dream, dream is, to, is to get more people into the industry as freight agents, learn the business, and helping people actually get shippers. So we can, you know what I'm saying? People can have those success stories. Mm -hmm. People can, you know what I'm saying? Follow our blueprint and be able to live the life that you deserve. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So if you're in this industry and this is something that you want to do, we just want to keep helping people and help people get shippers, get money and be, like I said, other people can live their dreams. Yeah, it's my biggest thing. I want to make sure that people able to live the kind of life they want to live. I know that mm -hmm. I've, I've experienced some things that I've never thought I experienced. Correct. You know, done some things I never thought I'd be able to do. You know what I'm saying? Just off being in this business. You know what I'm saying? It really changed my life. So that's where I, my goal is to create some more six figure, seven figure earn earners and change some old people's lives and make people be like, you know, it just made me feel good mm -hmm. when somebody calls and be like, hey man, I got my first customer. I moved my first load. What do I do? That it just give me the chills. You know what I'm yes. saying? So I want to create more of those feelings. Um and then and what's, people just calling us saying like, "Hey, I even seen your interview on Truck and Hustle. Yeah. I'm motivated just off of that." Yeah. So yeah. it just lets us know like we are truly out here doing something right, and we're living in our true purpose, and that's just that just makes me happy in itself. Yeah, and I know next for us, we just want to keep doing mentorships and coaching and perfect it and get even better and better at it. Offer more and more information and mm -hmm. just give more like introduce more and more people to the being freight agents, how to get in, how to do it right by people who actually move freight and to have like a team behind you. Cause it's more than just us. We have the owners, the agent manager, like everybody in the company is all, all in on family. this. So it's a family environment. You know what I'm saying? Even with my our coaching, you know, it's just, I like everything to be family oriented. Mm -hmm. Like it's nothing to wear you a number. I like people to be involved, a part of it and feel like, okay, we I'm family. a part of something bigger yeah. than just, a program you're not you know just saying? a number you're not just portal number one portal number two member yeah. no you are by your name we're addressing you by your name this is such and such on the screen today this is mm -hmm. such and such calling my phone like our sub agents have our personal cell phone numbers like we're not to where we're unreachable untouchable anything like that well we're working on doing another um enrollment or when we're going to do the next session because we had so many people trying to get in and we closed out. We actually started our first coaching program last Wednesday. Yes. So we, we only, we only shoot for just 10 people, but we ended up having 31. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I think we're going to open up a little bit more people next time, but we'll definitely keep everybody posted on when we start the next one yeah. or when we're planning on doing the next coaching. So everybody can go ahead and start signing up for it and just hop in. You know what I'm saying? But you know, we're trying to keep it so we don't get overwhelmed to where we can't help everybody mm -hmm. and make sure that we give everybody the proper attention. So I ain't want to like have like a thousand people or nothing like that, but I want to make sure right. that, you know, the people that I have are quality people and they're ready to go. And I want to be able to just help them. Did not say increase. <laughs> what? Did not say increase. Uh Oh, well, I, Hey, I don't know what she said. <laughs> oh, on the 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 the, the amount? How much know. it costs? Increase know. on what? I, I know the price did increase. Oh, I, yeah, 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 yeah. I think I forgot who that who is that? Because somebody did say that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. On the last call, I was like, oh, y'all ain't say that. <laughs> oh Lord, Lord, but but yeah. Any other questions anybody had? This is oops. There we go. There we go. <laughs> now, this has been great. Uh, we've still got everybody here. Lots of questions and engagement. I think fundamentally, I know the website streaming at the bottom. That's the mentorship. Uh, we shared the um, freight websites on um, the website too, um, on the um, in the comments as well. I'm just trying to look to see if I'm missing anything. Uh, you guys also check out the website. That's what the information's for. Check out the website. 
Um, you'll have all, I mean, it's, it's a well done website. So, you know, and also, did you mention Devin, is that where the, um, the, uh, wait list is kind of being built off of too? Yeah. We have, well, we haven't start the, started the wait list yet. People have just been hitting us up on Instagram or just basically calling. So mm -hmm. that's something that we're getting ready to work, getting ready to work on. Um, because we were trying to see if we were going to have another one before the end of the year or have it next year, but. I so many people are be, calling, so it's definitely going to be, gonna this, be year. this year. We're going to have to squeeze another one in. Yeah. I love that you guys are really, um, you know, focused on quality over quantity. Um, yeah. And so that that's really huge. You know, as they said, so much is part of their program. It's not just a login. It's not just curriculum. You have access. You have access to both, you know, these load boards, the equipment, I was really impressed with the phone number. I mean, you have all of those already built in. I tell you, I've worked for uh, some startups and they're like, yeah, give your phone number. I said, to who? <laughs> like, yeah. you know, am, am I the new owner? I mean, go ahead, put my name right. on there if that's what we're doing, but you paying my phone bill separately? You know? <laughs> so, I mean, for real. Um, but everybody, everybody gets an app, so you're able to have like an extension and it, it rings to your app, so it's a separate app so you know it's the difference between your calls this your business personal call, and personal. yeah you know that's very helpful very helpful yeah because it's like once you start you know you're already you know maybe like okay i'm using my last to do this because i'm betting on myself so we didn't want to have people to have all this extra added cost so it was like okay we'll go ahead and foot the bill for the um professional email so it's everybody's uniform with the hudson freight agency email and then having that app that's very important because if people are not used to using their cell phone for business and they're just answering, hello, hey, what's up? You know what I'm saying? No, I want to make sure that you're professional and you know who's calling your phone. So we're going to give you this app. Exactly. Yes, absolutely. People are like, because I've seen people like selling leads and all that. So anybody who comes to our program gets leads. You know yeah, we same, give you leads. Yes. Same leads that we will get from Zoom Info. Like people will try to sell. Like we just give them to them. So. Well, people get stuff off Fiverr. Like don't do that. No, nah, no. Nah, we make sure like whatever you need. If you try to go after this field or whatever, we our support break it team down. breaks it down for you and sends you whatever how many leads you need. So. Also, you guys, if you you know are considering the mentorship, just think about the team. You know, um, building a team with people who have your best interest in mind. Is so important, you know, um, that's really what teamwork becomes. I mean, you could just be a cluster of people otherwise, but when mm -hmm. you have synergy, when you have, you know, a vision to be able to learn what you need to learn as you're developing before you jump to your own, you know, it's, it's, it's an incubator really is what right. it is. And, you know, if you think about it that way to go in there, not trying to buck the system, but I'm trying to learn what the system is. You know, a lot of times it's funny you mentioned stream. I'm out here in Dallas and um, I was, you know, a provider at one time too. And yeah. I really liked their their conferences because I mean it was hyping you up. Yeah. And I remember yeah. it was just like, yes. And it's just like now what I do, you know. Yeah. It <laughs> and, got you um, hyped. It got yes, you hyped. I mean, it does. <laughs> I mean, they've got the lights, um, they've got, I mean, they take you through the entire emotion. Uh, spectrum. You're sitting there crying one moment. You're sitting I'm here like, what else I gotta do? Yeah, how how can we, you know, do this? Then you're ready to <laughs> fight the power, get up and dance. I mean, you know, those you dance, and that's yeah. what you know that you have to really explore the human side in all of this. That's you know, right. it's great to say I'm looking at the business, but connect with people that can help you understand the business from the humanity part. And I've had uh, seen all the comments about you guys transparency i mean that is so um so rare you know people just gonna hype us up and kind of get you like you said the raw raw go ahead and spend that money yeah. all right <laughs> and it's like i'm ready i've got my ticket and you're like okay put it over there in that pile and you're like wait 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 you, you loved me at once you know yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. no like this is truly our livelihood yeah. you know what i'm saying and, and the way that the internet is now you you will be out of business yeah People you know talk. what I'm saying? So we're not with that. So, we we're not trying to mess up our money and, and everything we got going on in our name. You know what I'm saying? So and better yet, our karma. Not. Like I've experienced karma in my life, and I ain't trying to do that no more. I believe in it. 
So it's like you do right, you get right. You know what I'm saying? What you do in the dark don't come to light. Oh, that's fast. So, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You treat people right in the public and not in public. You treat people right. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Right. So let's give some, um, let's even give some flowers. You know, I know uh, someone else taught me the time. They said, don't tell a man you're going to give him flowers, but we're giving you flowers today. <laughs> Both of you, here's your flowers. Uh, I forgot the term, uh, what Desi said to give men instead, but the flowers it is. Uh, I enjoyed your, um, your information, but really more so your energy. You guys are really approachable. Um, you know, when I reached out as I, you know, as you're getting all the social media fans reaching out to you, <laughs> you were very responsive to you. And I was just like, oh, wow. OK, she really answered. Oh, wait, she's here. And so I, mean, <laughs> I appreciate that, you know, from my experience working with you, I could really see how you guys are genuine. And I love the family dynamic. That is Oh wow! Like on top. I wish mine would have worked like that, but hey, <laughs> on hey, to the next, right? <laughs> it's always the future. Yeah, it's absolutely. always the future. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, this is awesome. So everyone who's watching, if you would just drop a comment, drop, share some love on, um, you know, that you appreciated this type of content. We really would appreciate it. You know, my goal as admin of the Minority Women in Logistics group is to make sure you're getting content that's not just for entertainment value, but it's really adding to your skill set, giving you those resources and genuine people in which to connect. So if you guys would please go ahead and share these so they know that we love them. We love them. We love them. We love them. I really oh, appreciate it. So y'all ain't going to make me tear up in this okay. <laughs> They ain't going to make me cry. <laughs> uh, very much appreciate it. And thank you, both of you. Thank you, both of you. And that was a pleasant surprise. I was just expecting your wife. But thank you for your energy as well. Your support. I mean, you guys are ride and die. Look, I love it. Yeah, Bonnie and Clyde. <laughs> We are a damn good package deal. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And look, y'all finished each other's sentence. <laughs> oh, you getting on? Oh, I'm getting on. Yeah, say, oh, oh, you? So we can have <laughs> look at we, we always say we, right? I just want to make sure. <laughs> it's we. We can't even say bye, bye, bye. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. It's, yeah, it's it, absolutely. No <laughs> All right, so make sure, uh, you guys, thank you. And um, who said this comment? Tasha, if you would kindly for me, drop that link um so everyone can connect to them we try to make it easy like look we roll out the carpet we put the links there I all the good stuff you guys <laughs> yeah I definitely look give you hope <laughs> yeah. i love it yeah, i definitely gotta do that i mean husband and wife team work out so much better i mean she might like you say she she your, your better half it's true like women have a sense of that men, men don't have yes. that compassion being able to talk on the phone sometimes we want to be straight about the business so you know it's good to have a woman by your side to kind of bring that personal personalized service to mm -hmm. it too you know what i'm saying so it works out great it does. Oh, awesome awesome so as we're closing up uh just a reminder uh this will be housed in the media tab so you can share it but i am putting it on youtube so you know it's easier to share outside of facebook and um, our group and so be looking for that to come here in just a moment i was just trying to, i thought it was a question that was here but did you have any parting comments um dynamic duel <laughs> Any parting comments for us to takeaways? Um, definitely. My my parting comment would be first things first. Definitely work on changing your mindset. If you don't believe you mm -hmm. can do what you're trying to do, change your mindset to knowing that you can. You know, what I'm saying once we started saying it was going to be this or this and nothing else, things started happening for us. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Affirmations always be positive. Don't talk yourself out of it before you even get into. It. You worked up your anxiety like everything. You talk yourself out of it pretty much. Don't do that. You can, you, whatever it is that you put your mind to, you can definitely achieve that and change your circle. Get around like minded people. I cannot stress that enough. Mm -hmm. It can definitely 10x your business, it can 10x your personal life. Everything just take you to the next level. Yeah, get with other couples, other whatever, whoever's making moves and long as y'all um heading the same direction you know not 
not as far as the same direction, the same business, but the same direction professionally, or y'all got mm -hmm. the same goals, link up with each other and share ideas and experiences and grow from each other because that's the best way. It's power in numbers. It is. It definitely is. And it's definitely power in proximity, like how close you are to people who are who are where you're trying to be. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So definitely I take that away from anything. You know that's right. Saying? That's right. All right. Oops. I'm I'm struggling with buttons again. So yeah. <laughs> there we go. I'm clicking away. I'm I'm trying to see if there's another comment. But thank you again for um, honoring us with this story, your presence, and a resource. Again, you've given us a solution to where if someone is struggling, wondering if I should be opening up a brokerage or not, how to even get into the field. Um, and I think bottom line is to get the support, get the education and then get the hustle get the hustle <laughs> i learned that from you guys today too you got to get to the yeah because i mean you can you can be in class but you know what you're gonna do next when you graduate right. so thank right. you we'll go ahead and close this on out and so if you're watching the replay also let us know if these times work for you know more participation like i said i'm really big on feedback so make sure you're giving that to me so i can bring some more people to the table of value thank you again you guys are wonderful uh, thank you all right so you have a great one and we're right, closing out oh, let me get back into my buttons look trying to work all this <laughs> okay here we go